to have the phase change, changing state. <coughs> uh, there is the names of the uh, changing process. Uh, for example, uh, fusion, or you can say melting, is substance change from solid to liquid. We call it, we call the process fusion or melting. You know that for the freezing, if you change liquid to solid, uh, we can change uh, liquid to gas to vapor. We call it evaporation, evaporization. And if you change vapor to liquid, we call it condensation. If we change <coughs> solid to vapor without being a liquid, solid to vapor without being a liquid, we call it sublimation. Sublimation. And uh, if we change gas, gas to solid without being a liquid, we will call it desublimation. Desublimation. Now we are going to explain the latent heat. Latent heat is the same as heat capacity. It is constant for all materials, but at the specific points. There is two points we will use latent heat. We will need latent heat, which is melting point, or we can say boiling point. At this two point, we will use the latent heat. Latent heat, in two cases, we will use it. Latent heat, boiling point, point of freezing or melting, you can say. Boiling or freezing points. Why? Because at this point, at these two points, temperature is not going to change for a while. So at the boiling point, at the freezing point, temperature stay the same. Temperature not going to change for a while. That's why we cannot use specific heat capacity because heat capacity, we can use it just for changing the temperature. But latent heat, we cannot use it when the temperature stay the same the change when you are giving the heat but the temperature stay the same in this case you can use a latent heat we have two types of latent heat latent heat of fusion which is when you change solid to liquid and we when you want to change liquid to vapor we will call it latent heat of vaporization lv and lf lf in these two cases we can uh, have latent heat so if there is temperature change there is no latent heat. If there is no temperature change, you give the heat, but the temperature stays the same, it's going to call it, we are going to call it as a latent heat. Uh, now, we are going to say latent heat, amount of heat that we, that taken or given out by a substance, when it changes the state without changing the temperature, this is important, without changing the temperature. We call this heat, latent heat. This amount of heat, it goes to break the bonds between the, the particles, between the molecules. That's why it's not going to change the temperature. If you want to change the temperature, you have to increase the kinetic energy of the particle. So heat transfer during the phase change. You can say during two points. Which point? Boiling point. Or we can say freezing point. For water, freezing point is 0 Celsius, and for water, boiling point is 100 Celsius. So heat is going to be equal to mass times latent heat. What is the unit of latent heat? The unit of latent heat it could be joule per kilogram without Celsius, or it could be calorie per gram without Celsius. We will use this latent heat when there is no temperature change. <clears throat> I will come back to this chart. Here is an example. We have this question. What is the energy required to change 150 grams of ice at 20 Celsius? How many heats do we need to change this ice? Because at 0 Celsius, we need the energy. How many 
energies do we need? How much energy do we need? Sorry. Uh, if I have latent heat of ice, which is equal to 80 calorie, and uh, because it said a zero Celsius, it doesn't say from zero to 20, from to 10, just say zero. In this case, we are just going to say mass equal to 10, 150 gram. Latent heat of ice is going to be equal to 80 calorie per gram. So in this case, heat is a noun. Heat is going to be equal to mass times latent heat of ice which is heat it's going to be equal to 150 multiplied by multiplied by 80 so 150 multiplied by 80 is going to be equal to 1200 what calorie or joule calorie because it is written in calorie latent heat of ice is written in the calorie <clears throat> here is another example which is not water it's lead this is lead for lead boiling point is different melting point is different for example melting point of lead is equal to 327 but for water is equal to zero so latent heat of fusion I have it and I have the mass I don't need to think about this to temperature because there is no change in the temperature so simply I can say Q equal to M times L heat is going to be equal to 20 times 6 and it's going to be 12 with the 0 120 calorie that is the amount of heat we needed at this temperature just at this temperature if we change the temperature we need uh, another amount of heat now we understood that we had two rules we had two rules. First one, Q equal to, sorry, Q equal to M times heat capacity times temperature change. When can I use this one? For water, for example, from negative 100, an example, it could be infinity negative, uh, to zero Celsius, I can use it. From zero Celsius, I can use it till 100 Celsius. From 100 Celsius, I can use it till infinity. I might say 200 Celsius, just for water, as for water. So in another case, we can say we can use this formula when you have just a liquid, just solid, just gas. If you have mixture, you cannot use it. For example, zero Celsius is the mixture of uh, ice and water. I cannot use it. But the second formula, Q equal to M times L, I can use it in two cases instead of three. I can use it at boiling point. Boiling point. And I can use it at freezing point. For water, for example, freezing point is 0 Celsius and 100 Celsius. So at these two points, at these two points, I can use this formula. I can use this formula. Before this, this point, after these two points, I can use the first, first formula. Okay? Now we're going to come back to this chart. Look. If I look at this line, from negative 20 to 0, I have just ice. So in this case, I have temperature change, and it's not boiling point, it's not a melting point. So from negative 20 to 0, I will say heat equal to mc delta t. But C what? Ice. Because from negative 20 to 0, we have ice. I wrote over there. Now, at zero Celsius, look, temperature doesn't change, stays at the zero. And I have water and ice mixture. It is not ice, it's not water, it's just mixture of them. So I will say heat equal to M times L ice. But from zero to 100 Celsius, from zero to 100 Celsius, look, the temperature changes. I can say heat equal to MC. Delta T, which heat, 
water, heat capacity of water. At, at 100 Celsius, because it's a boiling point, and we have vapor and water, I will say heat equal to M times L, L vapor. From 100 to 120, let's say that's 120, or higher than this one, you will just say heat equal to M times heat times delta T. Which heat capacity? Heat capacity of vapor. Of vapor. And we start from negative 20 to 120. If you start from 120 to from 120 to negative 20, you're gonna make the process negative, and that's all. The maximum amount of heat that we are using it, it could be five amount of heat. One of them for solid, uh, second one is just for the mixture of the solid and liquid, the third one just for the liquid, the fourth one for the mixture of the sol liquid and vapor, the fifth one is just for the vapor. Let's solve some example. Let's solve some example. Look, have a look at this example. What makes this example different than the other ones that we are using one heat, one Q, because in the previous examples we were having the different temperature in a state, in the same state. For example, from 20 to 40, from 10 to 90, from 1 to 99. We didn't have a melting point, we didn't have checkpoint, let's say. But if we look at this example, we need how what is the energy required to change 20 gram of ice at negative 20 changes to 40 negative 20 changes to 40 and i have heat capacity of ice equal to 0 0.5 and i have latent heat of ice equal to 80 heat capacity of water equal to 1. we start from negative 20. how much heat do we need to change to 40. i know that from negative 20 to 40 there is a point which is zero celsius Below the zero Celsius, I have ice. Over the zero Celsius, I have water. That's why we call checkpoint. So I will use three heat, three Qs. That's for the first one. That's for the second one, if you remember. And that's for the third one. For the first one. First one, we will say it is because there is a temperature change from negative 20 to, 20 to 0. I will say M times heat capacity of ice because below 0 is ice time is delta T. Heat 1 equal to mass how much? It's equal to 200 multiplied by heat capacity of ice 0 0.5 times temperature change. Look, for ice start, ice start at... I start from negative 20 and stopped at 0. So it's going to be T initial is going to be T final for ice. So T final equal to 0 minus minus 20. Which is heat number 1 is going to be equal to 200 multiplied by 0 0.5 multiplied by 20. 0, 0 cancel each other. 10 multiplied by <coughs> 5 times 2 is 10 multiplied by 200 is going to be 2000 calorie that is for heat number 1 for heat number 2 because the, we said when we can use the heat equal to M times L when when you have the boiling point or freezing point and I know 0 is the freezing point and I know it's ice changes to water at this point, so I will use this formula, which is heat number two equal to mass 200 times <coughs> 80, 1600, two times eight is 16 over the three zero, 16,000 calorie. And the last amount of heat, it starts from zero to 40. Why I will use the this formula water why because I have the temperature change and it's just a liquid at zero I had a solid solid plus liquid that's why I use this formula but for this one Q number three I have just water I will use the first one 
So heat number three is going to be equal to mass 200 times his capacity of water is one times temperature change, which is equal to 40 minus zero. <coughs> Q number 3 is going to be equal to 40 times 2 is going to be 80, 8,000 calorie. Now, the last step is Q total is going to be Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3, which is Q total going to be equal to 2,000 plus 16,000 plus 8,000 which is going to be equal to <coughs> 26,000 calorie that's how we are separating them first of all you have to read the question you have to know the range the range is between negative 20 to 40 and you know that between negative 20 to 40 there is a zero point there is a changing state point let's say because the ice is going to change to water at zero Celsius. That's why we are going to separate it to three parts. <coughs> Look at this question because it said remove it. It's in the, the result could be negative. The result could be negative because it said remove it. Or we might have one of the heats negative. What is the heat remove it to change 20 gram of water vapor at 110 Celsius to 90 Celsius. 110 Celsius to 90 Celsius. I will write it down, 110 Celsius. I want to change it to what? To 90 Celsius. Look, I know that between 110 to 90, I'm not going to take a middle number. I'm going to think about, is there a boiling point? Is there a freezing point or not? I know that 100 Celsius is between 90 and 110 at this point at this point vapor is going to condense to water vapor vapor is going to is going to change to water i know from one from 100 to 90 we have water from 100 to 110 i have vapor so in this case i have a mixture i have mixed the vapor and water that's why so now from 110 to 100 q number one at this point q number two from 100 to 90 q number three q number one because i have temperature change i will just say delta m times c times delta t which heat capacity i have heat capacity of vapor i had heat capacity of water which one? Because it's more than 100, or from 110, I will say vapor. So heat 1 equal to mass <coughs> 20 times 0 0.5 times, times temperature change. This is important, temperature change. Look, start from 110, stop at 100, vapor. After 100, you have water, that's why. So. Uh, 100 minus 110 so the result will be 10 times 10 is going to be negative 100 calorie q number two is going to be because it's 100 it is at the boiling point i will say m times l l what vapor Q number two is going to be equal to 20 times 540, which is going to be 540 multiplied by 20 is going to be 10,800 calorie. The last one is Q number three. The last one for Q number three, it starts from 100 to 90 because it's water. Water starts from 100 to 90, from 100 below the 100. And there is a temperature change, I will use this formula. Because it's below the 100, I will say water. So Q number three is going to be equal to 20 times one times temperature change is equal to 100, sorry, 90, 90, 
minus 100. Why? Because water starts from 100 and 290. The question is telling me remove it and the temperature changes from 110 to 90, not from 90 to 110. <coughs> so Q number 3, it's going to be equal to 10, negative 10 multiplied by 2, it's going to be negative 200 calorie. I will change and just have the total 1Q2 plus Q3, which is Q total is going to be equal to negative 100 plus 10800 minus 200, which is going to be Q total 10500 calorie look and instead of increases it decreases because you need to spend some energy removing <coughs> that's for a case of removing the amount of heat look at this question I will just draw the lines uh, and then the calculation is for you I won't do the calculation we have 100 gram of ice at 0 Celsius. We want to change it to vapor at 100 Celsius. So I will say 0 Celsius to my starting point. My ending point is 100 Celsius. So you might say immediately it's 1 Q, but actually it's not because I have 0, I have to say Q1. And from 0 to 100, I have to say Q2. From 100, I have to say Q3. And for Q3, I should, because it's 100, I should say mass time is L vapor for q2 do you have temperature change m time is c water time is delta t 100 minus zero and for this one i'll say m time is l ice so in this case you are going to use three amount of heats for the example 16 what is the heat removed to change 10 gram of vapor at 122 ice at zero celsius this is 120 Celsius, we want to change it to zero Celsius. I know that from 120 to zero Celsius, there is a change in state which is equal to 100. So it's going to make my walk a little bit long. Q1 at 100, Q2, and from 100 to zero, Q3, from at zero, it's going to be equal to Q4, which is in this two case, M times L vapor. It's going to be M times L ice. It's going to be equal to mass times C water times delta T. Delta T will be 0 minus 100 because it said remove it. And uh, for this one, M times C ice, C vapor times temperature change. Temperature change will be equal to 100 minus 120 which is going to be negative 20 for this one is going to be delta t delta t will be equal to negative 100 celsius now you can do the calculation